say that uh, Shiduch crisis, Shiduch crisis, Shiduch crisis. I say it's Midot crisis. People don't know what to look for. They don't know what they want. They want things they can't have. They're too picky. She wants him to be six feet five, two hundred twenty-two pounds, lean, and uh, the the brain of uh, the brain of Moshe Rabbeinu or something. He wants her to be like uh, some uh, woman he saw on TV. Hashem Yerachem. Everybody thinks they're gonna they're gonna marry Rabbi Akiva or Sarai Menu. The fact that when they look in the mirror, they see a little gremlin, they don't, they don't count that into the equation. But anyway, Rabotai, all joking aside, one of the main things that parents, that causes parents to worry is if their kids are ugly. I'm serious. Why? It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. So our natural, the scientists... The scientists are going to tell you that looks are based on the parents. If the parents are uh, supermodels, the kids are going to be little supermodels. But we know from evidence that it's not true. There's plenty of good-looking parents with little Gargamel kids. And plenty of hideous-looking parents, little trolls, with beautiful kids. Plenty. Now, I don't just mean looks looks as far as physical features. I also mean looks as far as their personality traits, good midot. You see, like a little tzaddik, he always wants good. He always wants to do good. He's kind. She's kind. Merciful. He's merciful. Nice, little good midot. Parents want that. When a parent sees that the kid doesn't want to share... He pretends like it's not a big deal, but he knows inside us he's suffering. If he's a normal parent, he's suffering inside. Why? He knows this kid is a little evil. Why can't you share? They're sharing with you. Why can't you share? Give them one begale. Give them one chip. Give them one pretzel. What's the big deal? You have a whole bag. What's the matter with you? You have a bag. You have a thousand begale. Give him one. You're not going to eat the whole thing. No, I don't want it. The parent said, no, no, he doesn't mean it. He doesn't know you. What do you mean he doesn't know you? He's been three years. They live next door of his brother. What happened? Parents are su- normal parents are suffering. If they're not normal, they're probably worse than the kid. So when a kid has bad midot, it's, su- it's suffering for the parents. So now, what causes, what leads according to our Torah? Torah mi Sinai. For the kid to be beautiful, both in features, physical features, and also in personality, midot. Now, I would have never guessed this because I would have guessed tarat mishpacha. Tarat mishpacha, family purity, we have places in the Gemara. Well, Rabbi Akiva says he sees a young boy that's chutzpan, that's rude. And he sees him and he says, yeah, one of the Chachamim says, yeah, it's probably because his mom was nida when she had him. The other Chacham says, no, no, it's probably the mamzer, it's probably the mom cheated. Rabbi Akiva says, no, it's both. With him, it's both. Like Rabbi Akiva, how do you know? He goes, let's check. Let's check. They go to the wife. Rabbi Akiva says, I promise you. I promise you, you have Olam Abba if you tell me the truth here. Because for Kiddush Hashem. Will you need that? And you cheat on your husband with this kid? She said, yes. So we have sources in the Gemara. It says that family purity has significance in regards to the midot of the person. It doesn't say about looks, though. I'm saying something that will affect the looks, too. The looks, too. Anybody want to guess? The haters are going to hate this one. But it's alakha. They can hate all they want. No?
Plenty of people did that in their kids' little gargamels. Watching your eyes, you're in the right direction. Okay, there's different things. Fine. Eating garlic? Garlic, no, that's going to get you a divorce. Your kids are not going to have a father. What does it say? Halacha is. Halacha is. A man is forbidden. This is Ilichot Isue Bea. Rambam. The Halachot of forbidden sexual relations. It says a man is forbidden to engage in relations by the candlelight, meaning you're not supposed to be intimate with your wife when it's light. It's supposed to be dark. And the reason why is the Allah says they t- you should never get to a point where you're disgusted by something. You know, per- certain people have certain things on their skin or uh, anything, any, anything that's there that happens over time or happened all the time, birthmarks, so on. In Chas Shalom, you don't want to ever be disgusted with each other. So, and also for modesty reasons. We're not the goyim, we're not animals. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be pitch dark where you can't see each other, but just uh, dark enough. Dark enough. If on Shabbat, he does not have another room and there is light burning, you should not engage in relations at all. Why is it mentioned Shabbat? It says in Shabbat, it's a mitzvah, it's a special mitzvah to be intimate on Shabbat. But if the only room you have in your house has light, it's better off not to fulfill this mitzvah. Such is the stringency of not being intimate when there's light. Why? What's all this about? What's all this about? Since it's forbidden for a Jew to engage in relations during the day. Why? For this is a brazen conduct. Azut panim. If he is a Torah scholar who will not be drawn to continue such conduct, he may create darkness with his garment and engage in relations. One should not, however, adopt this measure unless he is in great need. In the course of holy conduct, to engage in relations in the middle of the night. That's where you're supposed to do. Sado. Now, this most of us will think this has to do with the modesty of the woman. But that's where we're wrong. It also has to do with the modesty of the man. Why? In this text, Allah after it, two Allah after it, it says. Our sages forbid the, a man from engaging in relations with his wife while his heart is focused on another woman. He should not engage in relations while intoxicated, nor while quarreling, can't have, be intimate when they're after a fight, nor out of hatred. He should not engage in relations when, her, when it's against her will, when she's afraid of him, nor when one of them is placed under the ban of ostracism. He should not engage in relations with his wife after he made the decision to divorce her. If he does so, the children will not be of proper character. They will be those who are brazen and others who are rebellious and sinful. So here we see that already there's a few things that cause a person to have kids that have a, uh, that, that are the opposite of what he wants. Opposite of what he wants. But if you continue and fast forward, you'll see that it says a person, a man has to be modest even in the bathroom. Even in the bathroom. Why? Because the modesty of the man, the modesty of the man, if he's modest specifically during the times of intimacy with his wife, is what is going to give the blessing for the kids to have good character and to be beautiful. It's not the modesty of the woman. Modesty of the woman, of course, it's Kalvachomel. But 
that's just to have the kids. Bezat Hashem, you have blessing. But if you want them to have good character, you want them to uh, you want them to have to be good looking and so on. Stop acting like uh, you're uh, Shemechem what you are. Stop thinking that you're in some movie or something. Modesty of the man applies even at the times that you're in the bathroom. We're not allowed to act like animals at any times. Yes, of course, Allah says you're allowed to be with your wife in any way that you want. Yes. But you may have little Gargamel kids. If you're modest and you realize that this is a mitzvah too, you don't have a filthy mouth, you don't have filthy thoughts, you're thinking about her and not some woman you saw in the street. You, you constantly clean, make sure you have a clean mind. You have to have a clean mind. Why do you have to have a clean mind? Because the Avot de Rabbi Natan, chapter 20, first Avot, first Mishnah, says, first Pirush, says that this mind control, this clean mind, is not a matter of willpower. It's not just a matter of willpower. It's actually directing the attention of your mind from whatever filth is a possible choice to Torah. It's forcing your mind to think about something holy. Because the Torah is what awakens the influence which prevent a person's attention from focusing on things that are inappropriate. In this, the Gemara says, they asked one of the wives of the Chachamim, in the Gemara, they asked, how did you merit to have every single one of your kids is beautiful? Every one of your kids is beautiful. How? She says, because my husband acted modestly and not boldly, even during the times of, of intimacy. My husband was modest even during that time. Why? Because the, what he has in his mind and how he behaves with his body has special significance in Hashem and in Shemaim to such an extent that the Sfarim HaKadoshim, I saw it, Sfarim HaKadoshim say that it actually has that specific, that specific seed, if you will. That specific seed, Hashem blesses it. And that's why in the book of Jeremiah, Hashem says to Jeremiah, even before you came to the world, I knew you. He says, even before you came to the world, I knew you. What do you mean you knew him before he came to the world? Yes! I knew you because your parents, Jeremiah, were modest. When? Intimate. I knew you as the seed, I knew you. And I knew you're going to be tzaddik. Why? Parents were modest. So that's the key, Rabotai, is when a person thinks that he can act like the movies. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if problems happen after. And that's why I tell people to be modest. It's not just, oh, you're Hasid because of it. It's not, oh, it's just nice, you look better. Modesty has so many benefits for marriage, for life, for connection to Hashem, for children, and so on. And that's why a lot of the times you see that usually the problem kids in the shul, many of the times, is because the parents are not modest. And it has nothing to do with how they, how they dress. Sometimes they dress uh, black and white, but the kids are little uh, trolls. Why? It comes out of the parent's mouth, it's not modest. What comes out of the parent's mind is not modest. Modesty is, a, is, is something that's kol kulo. It's, your, it's all of you. And the only way you could actually achieve it is through learning an enormous amount of Torah and applying it and making sure that you have this midah. You have, you're, you're working on it. Yeah.